As I've been learning more about longevity over the past few months, one thing persistently comes up. VO2 max. So VO2 max. VO2 max. VO2 max. Study after study has shown it to be the strongest predictor for future life expectancy. In the words of Dr. Peter Atia, VO2 max is perhaps the single most powerful marker for longevity. So I decided to go to a lab and get my VO2 max tested. We're going to dive into my results, but first let's talk about what VO2 max is. In case you're a moron like me, here's a quick refresher on what VO2 max is. To put it simply, it's a measure of how much oxygen your body can use during exercise. When you take a breath, oxygen enters your bloodstream by attaching to red blood cells as they pass through your lungs. Your heart then pumps that oxygen through your blood vessels. That oxygen is then delivered to cells all throughout your body. The mitochondria in your cells then use that oxygen to produce ATP. ATP is sometimes referred to as the energy currency of life because it's the fuel that our cells use to function. So the fitter I am, the more oxygen I can use to produce ATP. The more oxygen I can use to produce ATP, the faster I can swim a lap in the pool. Imagine a pyramid. If you wanna build a really tall pyramid, then you need a strong base or foundation. I first heard of this idea from Dr. Peter Atia. This is the pyramid of cardiorespiratory fitness. The top of the pyramid or the height of the pyramid represents your VO2 max. In order to build that VO2 max higher, we need to create a stable foundation for the pyramid. This can be done by training zone two. Now, if you wanna know more about zone two, I made an entire video on it and I'll link it in the description. In a nutshell, to train zone two, you have to do fairly low intensity cardio. If you're on a run and you can maintain a strained conversation, then you're probably in zone two. To increase your VO2 max, you should be spending about 80% of your cardio in zone two. The other 20% of your cardio should be spent doing three to eight minute intervals of high intensity exercise. In other words, pick an activity that's so difficult that you can only do it for between three and eight minutes. By spending time training both zone two and that higher intensity, you're going to increase the area of that cardiorespiratory pyramid, and that in turn will increase your VO2 max. For the past few months, I've been training zone two really consistently. To help me stay in zone two, I set up custom heart rate alerts on my Apple Watch. While I'm running or on a stationary bike, I'll get an alert if my heart rate goes above my target for zone two or if it drops below that zone two window. It's a good thing I've been doing a lot of zone two cardio. It would have been a lot better if I was also mixing in some of that higher intensity work. Unfortunately, I've been spending virtually all of my cardio training time in zone two. Because of this, the peak of my cardiorespiratory pyramid, my VO2 max, isn't nearly as high as I would like it to be. We're going to go over my lab test results and I'll show you what my current VO2 max is, but first let's talk about what I'm going to be doing to increase my VO2 max. Dr. Atia recommends that people start with four by fours. This means that you exercise at a high intensity for four minutes, then you take a four minute break. Then you repeat this a total of four times. So one four by four session should last about 32 minutes. Right now I train zone two for about five hours every week. So if I cut that back, to four hours and then added two four by four sessions, that would give me that 80-20 split that I'm looking for. 80% of my time in zone two, 20% training at high intensity. Okay, so I recently went to a sports lab and did what's called a sub-maximal test. People usually talk about VO2 max in terms of the volume of oxygen a person can use per kilogram of body weight per minute. According to the test I did, my VO2 max is 34.4 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Now, I thought I was in pretty good shape on the cardio side of life, but apparently I have some work to do. According to this chart, my cardiorespiratory fitness is ranked as poor for my age and sex. After looking into it further, I found out that I'm in the 13th percentile, which means that if you put me in a statistically perfect room of 100 males between the ages of 20 and 24, there would only be 12 people with a worse VO2 max than me, and the remaining 87 people would have better VO2 maxes than me. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video? VO2 max is perhaps the single most powerful marker for longevity. If you want to maximize your chances of living longer, ideally your VO2 max should be in the top 25th percentile for your age and sex. This means my new target baseline VO2 max is 49 milliliters per kilogram per minute. I have a follow-up test scheduled for a few months from now. Between now and then, I'll be training both zone two and at high intensity to try and increase the area of my cardiorespiratory pyramid and hopefully increase my VO2 max. If you'd like a detailed look at the training program I'm implementing, let me know. And if you wanna see my results, make sure to follow along. If this video is helpful to you, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have any questions and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.